last week on Legally Kidnapped. Good evening. Our top story this week. After Senate Bill 234 is signed into law, Delaware becomes the first state in the country to effectively outlaw the spanking of children by their parents. In Georgia, the child protective industry is considering creating a centralized child abuse hotline instead of letting calls go through local offices where CPS agents have been known to tamper with reports. In Indiana, the child protective industry is denying the criticism of judges and cops regarding their new centralized child abuse hotline, which is said to slow response times to child abuse and neglect reports. In the United States, child protective industry is becoming increasingly concerned with the social media use of kids who are stuck in the foster care system, as it's an easy way for them to keep in contact with their parents and friends. In Illinois, CPS agents are protesting $50 million in budget cuts to the child protective industry, which the child protective industry is planning to use to take away family preservation programs credited with drastically lowering the number of foster kids in care over the last few years, thus effectively enabling them to snatch more kids. In Arizona, after discovering a computer error that enabled the child protective industry to withhold records from parents and lawyers for years, state and county officials are now trying to say that it was no big deal. And now they're saying that Arizona CPS agents can't keep up with their records, which often remain incomplete anyway. In North Dakota, due to the mismanagement of a CPS agency, the federal government decides to take over child welfare operations on an Indian reservation. In Pennsylvania, the child protective industry is much quicker to terminate the parents' rights than any other state so they can put them up for adoption that much faster. The big pharmaceutical companies are now making $7.2 billion a year in sales for meds with the 5 million kids who have been diagnosed with ADHD. And in Washington, many CPS agents on staff are unqualified to investigate claims of child abuse and neglect. In Connecticut, the child protective industry gets a $5 million federal grant that they say will be used to help families avoid having their kids stolen by CPS agents as they try to get out of 20 years of court-ordered oversight by a child advocacy group by trying to put less kids into group homes and more into foster care. In Texas, CPS agents are falling behind on their child abuse investigations because the child protective industry can't seem to hire enough CPS agents to deal with all the kids they want to snatch. In Rhode Island, the child protective industry spends $10 million over the last year sending stolen kids to out-of-state facilities as far away as Florida and Tennessee. And the traditional daddy-daughter dance is now banned in Rhode Island so that they don't violate any of the state's anti-gender discrimination laws. In Poland this week, a couple of foster parents are arrested after two kids die while in their care. In Costa Rica, the district attorney is investigating child porn that was found on a computer in a child welfare agency. In Scotland, a CPS agent has her computer containing sensitive information about foster kids stolen. Swaziland bans the socially accepted practice of child marriages after the practice was linked to a recent spread of AIDS. And Russian officials want access to a ranch in Montana where they are claiming that American adopt parents are dumping unwanted Russian orphans. In Ireland this week, the government wants power over parents when deciding on what's best for children instead of stepping in only when the parents have failed. And the Irish Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Children releases their second brutally emotional commercial after the first was banned from the airwaves last year. In India, a special courtroom is created for kids to be recorded while testifying in court cases without having to put them through the stress of sitting and looking at whoever they're testifying against in a traditional courtroom. And due to recent budget cuts, many Indian orphans with multiple disabilities are at risk of losing the homes that they have set up to meet their special needs. In Canada, a man who was once a member of the Dufferin Children's Aid Society gets a year in jail for having sex with his foster daughter. The former executive director of the Dufferin Child Protective Industry has no regrets for failing to report the abuse in that case. In Canada, counts the country's stolen kids for the first time in their census, finding a total of 47,885 kids were living in foster care in the country in 2011. In Australia, the New South Wales Premier issues a public apology to the victims of forced adoption from the 1950s to the 1970s. In England, a social worker is found guilty of possessing extreme pornography on his computer. And the government of Slovakia is about ready to take the British child protective industry to the European court over the UK's practice of illegal child snatching from Slovakian parents. In entertainment news this week, Usher's ex-wife is denied a retrial after losing her her custody battle. Halle Berry is still trying to convince a judge to let her take her kid to France so she can be with her new boyfriend far, far away from the kid's father, claiming that the paparazzi is more 
are friendly to celebrities there, but the father's lawyers are planning on using some of the topless photo scandals of Prince William's wife, Kate Middleton, to prove otherwise. And in sports, former Penn State football coach Jerry Sandusky finally has his sentencing date set for October 9th after being convicted of having sex with foster kids. According to a rash of recently released files, it turns out that the Boy Scouts of America helped scout leaders who molested the kids cover their tracks in many cases that happened between 1970 and 1991. In Colorado, the child protective industry is appealing a wrongful death lawsuit with attorneys arguing that CPS agents are not responsible for a 7-year-old who starved to death in a foster home. In Mississippi, a real mother who wants to know why her kid who is in foster care ended up with rope burns around his neck. And in Illinois, a woman is risking being evicted from her subsidized apartment, which would also mean losing her grandniece, who she has had custody of since they were removed from their parents by CPS agents. In West Virginia, a lawyer changes his wrongful death lawsuit on behalf of a couple of parents whose baby was shaken to death by his foster mother. In Florida, an illegal immigrant father who is facing deportation proceedings gets a year-long reprieve so that he can stay and take care of his son who otherwise would have ended up in foster care. A Florida couple, her a social worker and him a cop, was denied the ability to adopt a child because the agency didn't agree with the religious beliefs of the church they belonged to. And finally, tonight, in Virginia, a mother was recently investigated by police and CPS agents after a neighbor spotted the kids playing out in their front yard unsupervised and decided to make a call. For these stories and all the latest dirt on the child protective industry, visit www.legallykidnapped.com. And until next week, this is Baby LK, over and out.